Okay, so. Right, so 2 Timothy 3, 17, that the, that the man of God may be perfect. So we should be able to put our name there. So why do we see out of the book of the Lord and read? And why, do, why is the scriptures given to us? Inspired by of the Most High to correct us, make us righteous, so that we may be perfect. Each and every last one of us, we can put our names there. Okay, because we that's us. That's what we're talking about. So when someone say, Well, why you always gotta come out the scriptures? Why do you read that Bible? Why? And, you know, why you got to get the answers from there? Don't you want to be better? Yeah. You want to be better, then it's got to come out the scriptures. If you want to improve, thoroughly furnished. Perfectly. Your precepts should say perfectly furnished. Not just the mattress on the floor. 12 inch TV no that's the house but our bodies our spirit thoroughly furnished because when our spirit is thoroughly furnished you know what we have the ability to do the scriptures say what about a person with wisdom a wise man does what with evil hey, he can foresee the evil what does foresee mean? Foresee means you can look at a situation and see steps down the line on what's going to happen. This is going to turn into that. This is going to turn into that. Use your eyes. Use your experience. Use the scriptures that taught you. Okay? A wise man foreseeth the evil. And hiding himself from it. That can only. That's one of the furnishings. That come from wisdom. That the Most High gives to. Those that love him. Those that fear him. Those that obey him. And you don't see people with this wisdom. That don't serve the Most High. And it ain't a, that ain't a shot out. That's. You know. That's intended. Intentional, but that's just the truth. So even the brothers and sisters that that's learning about Christ, if they still sinning daily and not applying the scriptures through lust, they ain't gonna even be thoroughly furnished unto what good works. They're gonna have problems with their marriages. They themselves. You know, are not going to have best wishes. They're not going to have good luck. They're not going to have good success. They're not going to be thoroughly furnished. Because the decision making in their mind is going to come from work. From the world. And what did the Most High say? None can deliver out of his hand. So when the, when the Most High is against you, he turns back. He turns his back. And those of the world, they, they may try to assist you, but they're going to only do it for their own gain. They, they profit something out of it. If they don't profit nothing out of it, they ain't going to assist you. It's only a matter of time until they turn their back on you. Okay, so let's go to a precept that helps, that helps further edify on what's going to help the ground up beneath our feet. Let's get Isaiah 33. And we Remember these precepts. We can do good for ourselves. We can do good unto ourselves. Okay. Uh, 
Isaiah 33 verse 6. I shall start at verse 5. It says, The Lord is exalted, for he dwelleth on high. He hath filled Zion with judgment and with righteousness. And wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times. And the strength of salvation for the fear of the Lord is, is his treasure. Okay? So every man and woman and child has to know and understand that it's the most high in Christ that we have to exalt. There is Christ that we have to exalt. Christ said, You believe in ye believe in the Father, believe in me also. So that's I give you the credit. You believe in the most high. Well, you also have to believe in Yahweh Shai. You have to believe in Christ. And you have to exalt Christ. And exalt and in exalting Christ and having the faith and believe that he dwells on high, not just in things in heaven. But also among us in earth. On earth. And that what. He fills Zion with judgment. Okay. With judgment. And with. And with righteousness. Well what is the judgment and righteousness. The understanding of the most high's will. Yeah, we know about being penalized. Israel know that all so well. But as well as a determination on what's right. Because Israel don't know what's right until they do what? Read the Bible. Our houses can't be right until we read the Bible. We would do what with each other? Fight and devour one another if we don't read the Bible. We would think evil of one another if we don't read the Bible. We defile ourselves and be disrespectful to all around us if we don't read the Bible. So reading the Bible, the judgment is that we cannot think evil one of another. And the wisdom of the Most High that's written in the scriptures is for Israel to be charitable one of another, long suffering one of another love each other like we love ourselves no man hated his own flesh that is the judgment that was determined by the most high and given to christ to give to who his sons so did the most high put judgment into our life yes we don't understand it though because without the book and it's just in our house on the shelf we're gonna fuss and fight we're gonna leave and not come back we're going to leave the women widows. Either whether it's by death, whether it's by you being deserted, in prison, that woman is going to be left alone. Your children will be fatherless without the judgments in the scripture. So why would you not want to read the Bible? Why would we not want to? Why would we not want to read it? Not only just read it, but apply it. That it may be well with us. The righteousness is what? You reap the benefits. The most high sent Christ into the heart of your wife. Now she's no more harlot forehead. Send Christ into the heart's of your husbands, now he's no more whoremongering forehead. Send Christ into the hearts of the children, now they are no more unclean, rebellious, stubborn, haughty, arrogant, oppressive. Righteousness is what the wisdom of the Most High is. Without that wisdom, Israel, man, we self we destructive. We always wonder, well, what's wrong with our people? Why are we so destructive? Because we are without the wisdom of the Most High. But being established with grace, which is Christ, 
the gift, the wonderful gift of the Most High. If we, if we seriously consider and we take it day by day and work on ourselves, no matter how long it takes, work on yourself. Work on yourself. Improve yourself. Get bigger. Get better with it. Get stronger. And then help those around you immediately. You're going to do good for your, for your people. You're going to be good for your nation. You're going to be profitable. And thoroughly furnished. Wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy time. Your life, in your lifetime, wisdom of the Most High and His and knowledge and knowledge of Him. Hold this, get John 17. St. John 17. So wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability. St. John 17, 3. And this is life eternal. That they may know thee. The only true God. Okay, so how. So what do we use the wisdom and the knowledge of the Bible to do? To get to know the most high. To get to know the one that you call God. And get to know his judgments. What has he determined? A household should be like. A man should be like. A child should be like. What, did, what was the determination of the most high? For brothers to have unfeigned love one for another. And for you to determine based on what's written in the scriptures that these things were righteous. In doing so, this is life eternal. That they may know thee, the only true God. In doing so, we get to know our Father, which are in heaven. Hallowed. That his name is hallowed. And that his kingdom will come. His will will be done in earth. And it starts with us because you know what? We're learning to rehearse the righteous acts faithfully now. And that, I'm sorry. Uh, and this is life eternal that they may know thee, the only true God and Jesus Christ and Yahweh Shai. See? And Christ. Not just the most high. See, when you get to know Christ, but when you begin to get to know Christ, you know what happens then, man? Our life, then our life gets more diligent. Now we have to be more diligent. Because before we knew Christ, we was worshiping who? The Lord, the merciful Lord. The Lord, the merciful Lord, God is full of mercies and forgivenesses. But he put power into Christ's hands and Christ will not acquit us. Now we have to be more diligent. We have to be more faithful. We have to come on a higher level, more spiritual. Christ himself out of his own words. Say that the father himself was looking such to worship him. To be spiritual and be truth. Be in truth, deal in sincerity. So our dealings have got to be just. They got to be right, honest. No trickery. No slacking. And we have to stop expecting or warning or not wanting someone to police us. We can't police each other. You walk your way. I hope you make it. You got to make that decision. You're going to steal. You're going to die. 
You're going to lie. You're not going to make it. You're going to fall short because you not, not dealing in honesty, but dealing in what corruption. Covetous. No place for it. See? So Christ, man, we got to we got to believe in Christ, too. Because Christ showed us the way that we can do it. You children, man, you have a heck of an example. Man, you, you, you got an advantage. You got an advantage. Because you have not known a lot of sinful things that a lot of adults do. The Most High has plagued us. Adults, because of pride, rebelliousness, sins, the Most High has plagued us with judgments until we repented. But it still left a scar. You children are not scarred like that. Don't be rebellious. As you're being taught the word of the Most High and taught to believe in Christ, repent and save yourself. That's what the apostles was teaching from this untoward generation. The generation that you see, they're not going toward the Most High. They're going away from the Most High. Why would you die? You see the people are pining away in sin. Why would you die? They're falling to pieces You're before your very eyes. Being addicted to every drug known. Being, they're putting children, fatherless children on the ground. They're being murdered. Our carcasses are laid down in the street. Sickness and full of illnesses. Because of sin. So why would you think that you can sin against the Most High in your own lust and prevail? The Most High said it, it will surprise him if you do. <laughs> But he sent Christ to show you how to avoid sin and how to get your way out of temptation. He gave you the love of brothers and the love of sisters to count and rely on each other. You have to use that. You, ha you have to use that to help strengthen your way while you are on the path. See? Whom thou hast sent. Back to Isaiah Isaiah 33, verse 6. And wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times. You want to know how to make it through hard times? I'm going to get, I'm going to get a degree. I'm going to get a better job. I'm going to move out of the slums. Try, try learning the scriptures and learning about Christ. You believe in God, believe in Christ too. And add wisdom. It'll make you stable. Sometimes a lot of Israel feel like, well, I don't know what to do. Because their life is changed. Okay, a lot of our lives change. That side thing you had on the side, a lot of people, brothers and sisters, they can't do that no more. So much has got to change. Israel, man, we go, when you're in the world, you might be at a higher state. But when you come to serve the Lord, the most I would change, take that estate away and humble you. Humble you amongst the brothers and sisters of Israel 
that's going to enter into his rest. That's why scriptures say, uh, and be not what? When thou changed to a lower state, squeeze that, because to be not hasty. You know, don't, don't run from the most high. You learn the scriptures. You get people, man, they learn the scriptures and they already got a sinful job. Their job is based upon the whole trade is law unlawful. And now they can't. They're like, I, well, I won't be able to pay rent and bills and nothing. Well, what if you die? Your rent and bills still ain't going to get paid. The, the, the creditor, the debtor, is just going to adjust. But you're dead. So you, we don't use the world to make us stable. We don't use clothes and outfits to make us stable. If my hair looks like this, then I'm accepted. Now, they ain't going to make you accepted. The scriptures say wisdom and knowledge is going to make you accepted. Not clothes and sneakers. Dresses and and and. What did, what did what guys wear? Blazers. <laughs> and strength of salvation. And this is life eternal. So our salvation, if you want to strengthen your salvation, what do you use, man? You use the wisdom which has come from the Bible. And you use knowledge which come from the Bible. The fear of the Lord is his treasure. Okay. So for every man that fears the Lord, he, fear, he values that more than, more than anything. And that's how we have to look at the fear of the Lord. The Most High treasures the men and women that fear him. And that same fear that we have for the Lord is more valuable than anything that we possess. Because that's the strength of our salvation. We don't want our salvation to be small. I know salvation can be small. If it is, if, if your faith is small, then your strength is small. And if your strength is small, then what's up with the salvation? It's like you further away from it. When that's supposed to be priority. We have to prioritize things while we're living in the truth. It's got to be the truth of us. We're going to make it or we're going to die trying. No, not all, but we have to die trying. Let's get up. Uh, Wisdom of Solomon 6. Wisdom of Solomon 6. Okay. Solomon 6. Wisdom of Solomon 6 and 1. Hear therefore, O ye kings, and understand. Learn, ye that be judges of the ends of the earth. 
So we know Solomon is saying this. Solomon is talking to the men of Israel. When he's saying this, Solomon himself is king. Learn. Ye that be judges of the ends of the earth. So if we have to learn and we still judges. You know what? What we're missing? The basic principles. And a lot of us don't realize that. A lot of brothers in Israel, we don't realize that. Okay. Uh, give ear ye that rule the people. And glory in the multitude of the nations. For power is given you of the Lord. And severity from the highest. Who shall try your works. And search. And search out what? Counsels. So we have been in a position. To where. We got to deal with the scriptures. We also have to know. That the most high is. Looking at us and overseeing our actions and how we deal one with another. Because although he said in glory in the multitude of the nations. We know and understand the children of Israel not sent unto the nations. But we teach and help fellow brothers and sisters in the midst of the nations. So while we're in the midst of the nations. We ain't got nothing to say for or against them. So why should we be railing on the nations? And why should we rail on the children of Israel as they walk amongst the nations? We shouldn't. We should use the basic uh, necessities, essentials that the Most High Christ taught us. I know I, I said a couple times, I guess let's get it real quick. See in first Peter two. Because we don't have to prove how deep and how wise we are. How much <laughs> how much education that we have. When it comes to in the scripture, we don't have to prove that. But what we do have to prove, what we do have to display is this. First Peter 2. And that's why he called them, he said that they were judges, but they also had to learn. First Peter 2, 1. Wherefore, laying aside all malice. And our guile and hypocrisies and envies and evil speakings. So where does this start at? And it's got to start at home. This got to start before it even starts in our houses. It's got to start with the person in the what looking glass. It's got to start with the person in the mirror. That reflection, you know, that person that looks like you, that is you. It's got to start right there. And you have to make sure that you put aside evil intent to what? Retaliate, to revenge, render evil for evil, do react a certain way because brothers react a certain way. I'm going to treat this brother like this because he treats me like that. I'm going to treat this sister like that because she treats me like that or she treats another sister like that. Most people just read the scriptures and start talking. And Gal, what is Gal? Not everybody at one time. Trickery? Trickery? Right. Definition says the use of clever and unusual dishonest methods to achieve something. The use of clever and unusual dishonesty, dishonest methods 
to achieve something. Can you give an example? You think you got one in life? Go ahead. Okay, not exactly it. Okay. Um, you got something, Wada? Uh, uh, an example of gal. Like, uh, I guess could it be like twists and scriptures? Because you may know more than another person. Okay, no, listen to, the, listen to the definition. The use of clever and unusual dishonest methods to achieve something. So I, I really want something done, but I'm going to use a dishonest way to get it done. So I'm a contractor. So I say, well, listen, um, I really want, I want you to help me with something, but instead of coming out asking you, to help me with it, you know, I get you to uh, say, well, listen, take this trip with me to the store. Okay. So not only am I going to the store, but what else happens? But the intent has got to be there. You understand? It's an intentional, it's, it's, it's a clever and unusual dishonest method. Okay. So we think that, we may think that, well, it, it's all the time got to do something with uh, using the scriptures. A lot of times it can. But a lot of times these are just the ways in the, these are ways of life that men and women use. They use this clever and dishonest ways uh, to get something. You need money from a brother or sister, and you play, play broke. Uh, you play helpless. You play homeless. I don't know. You know. I'm asking y'all for an example. You got something now? Yeah, like All right. Uh, uh, just, just, I guess dealing with like two people say, you, like you want to do something, but you don't have the money. But you ask the person, but you instead of telling them that it's for this, you'd be like, oh, it's for a bill or something. So you use the bill as like an incentive to where the person go okay, it's for a bill. And they go ahead and pay But if you told them it was like to go out, you know, to go out and have fun or something, they might be more inclined, like I really don't have it. But you say the bill, and they seem that that's important so that they can give you money. Yeah. You know, anything that, that if you mislead a person, so it's really dealing with misleading a person. You make them think one thing, but it's about something else. So we have to uh, denounce ways of dishonesty. Okay. So hypocrisies, envies, evil speakings, how should we behave as newborn babes? As as newborn, not behave, but as we have to, like Christ Himself said, humble yourself. How, like this little child. So if 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 in our actions we're not really humbling ourselves as as children, you know, first and foremost to the doctrine of Christ, and then you know to one another. We're not fulfilling this. As newborn babes, desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby. What is the sincere milk of the word? What is going to enter us into life? Keep the commandments. Christ said, keep the commandments. But a lot of us, we get caught up in mysteries. A lot of brothers, man, they stumble and make enemies. They... they they strive over the word of the Most High. That's the Most High's word. They strive and argue over the name of the Most High. They strive and argue over the birth of Christ. 
And he strive over things that are above them. So a lot of things are taught in parables. And people that don't, that the most high didn't give it to, they miss it. They don't understand it. They have to go back to the drawing board. And the desire is the sincere milk of the word so that they can grow. And they be so sure, if we're so sure in certain parts of the doctrine and we're breaking the laws, your suspicion is overthrowing your judgment. You're going to be wrong in that. And the most high going to judge you based on what? Not so much if you could pronounce his name or even if you understood the birth of Christ. But he's going to judge you about the commandments, which you did what? Forsake. You have forsook the commandments of, of his. And you didn't listen to Christ. All right, so let's go back. Okay, so Solomon 6 and 4. It says, because being ministers of his kingdom, ye have not judged the right. Okay. Nor kept the law. So when it says you have not judged the right, what did the most I give us when he gave us judgments? He sent Christ. And Christ brought out the judgments of the Most High and showed that we can do what? That we can walk in those ways. And those judgments determined that Israel was under sin and that Israel had to do what? Apply the scriptures. They had, we had to walk in the ways of our Father, the Most High, instead of making cloaks. It's a thing I'm hearing now. The law is... The law is spiritual. As long as it's in your mind. And the ones that are saying that. Not applying it. It's in your mind. I never heard that. Oh, I, we, I, I understand that. The scripture is supposed to be in our mind. And the commandments in our mind. But what I don't understand it is. If it's in your mind. What are you supposed to do with it? It's, you're supposed to apply it. Let's get James to correct that. James 2.18. Actually, we'll start at 17. So the same wisdom in which a lot of our brothers who are the children of Israel, they try and stand by that. The same ones and become a star. They stumbled over the stumbling block. And that stumbling block is Christ. Because Christ don't do the things like that or say that. James had walked with Christ. Listen to what he said. 2.17. James 2.17. Even so faith. If it have not what? Works. Is dead. Being alone. So the spirit, so the uh, what, what what's being said? Not what I say. The how they try to say the law is spiritual. The law is spiritual, in, the law is spiritual, and in your mind. Okay, so if you if the faith that you have in that process to where you put the laws in your mind and you know about it, it says if it have not works, it's dead. Verse 18, yeah, man may say, thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works. So show me, the, show me that, you, that you know the law, and, you being, and it is spiritual in your head, without thy works, and I will show thee my faith, how? By my works. Right, so I'll show you that I believe in the spirit of the Most High. 
and the commandments. I show you by how by the works. Okay, so if with the laws being spiritual in our mind, it's supposed to manifest itself in, in our actions. Okay, we ain't supposed to be the same creature that we was. The scriptures say all things are new. So we, we ain't no difference than Israel that have not repented, that walk around with the Bible in their hand and in their house and in their car and in the window and in the trunk, under the seat. You no know, different from them. They quote scriptures too. Their doctrine is universal. Yours is, okay, about the children of Israel, but what are we missing? If we don't repent and bring forth the works that Christ did, what are we missing? We're missing Christ. Verse, uh, wisdom of Solomon 6, 4, because being ministers of his kingdom, ye have not judged the right. Okay. So the judgments is off amongst our people. Nor kept the law. So they're not keeping the laws of Christ. Why did I say of Christ? Because the Most High gave them, He gave the commandments to Christ to give to us. And Christ said it was the doctrine of His Father. So it's still the same, the laws of the Most High. They, Israel, feel comfortable with saying the law of Moses, but they can't say the law of Christ. Because the law of Christ is going to lead to them doing what? Having to follow Christ. And Christ did what? Applied the law. He established the law. He said, thank God that I've come to what? Destroy. destroy. I've not come to destroy, but to fulfill what? His death. Okay. That was one of the prophecies in Isaiah 34, 16, where it says, none of these shall fail. So it was written about Christ, that Christ would die, come and die and be a sacrifice for the nation of Israel. That had to be fulfilled. And he fulfilled that. So pertaining to the law, it said, think not that I have come, not one jot or tittle shall in no wise pass from the law. So now how is it in our mind, but it's not in our actions? That's being blinded right there. If we, want, if we don't want to apply the scriptures, we're blinded by what? Whatever lust that's stopping you. Some guys, they don't want to... They, Some men cut their beards off and cut them up because of their appearance. If your wife accepted how you look, isn't that enough? So why? That's a harlot. That's whoredom. That's love for the world. And sisters, the women, they wear the short clothes, skimpy clothes. Your husbands accept the modest apparel. Why are we impressing the world? Because that's where our mind is. Remember Lot's wife. That's all the scriptures going to say. Remember Lot's wife. So I'm going to say, remember Lot's wife. My boss was in the wrong direction. Looking back at a sinful world. This world here. Modern day what? Sodom and Gomorrah. Nor walked after the council, okay, nor walked after the council of the Most High. So we got to get back to that. The word of the Most High is the fountain of wisdom. Let's get that real quick. Please ask us one. Then we'll come back. So wisdom of Solomon 6, 4, nor walked after the counsel of God. Please ask us one and five. The word of God most high is the fountain of wisdom. So what is the counsel of God? It is the Bible, it's the fountain of wisdom, it's the word. 
the word. So if we don't, if we don't walk after the the counsel of the Most High, then we didn't walk after the word of the Most High and doing these things. Because the word of the Most High, it is the fountain of wisdom in which men should drink from. Verse 4, 1 and 4, wisdom have been created before all things. So if the wisdom of the Most High being created before all things, why are we forsaking wisdom to establish what? Some other path to walk in. Have not we seen that it leads to what? Captivity. And being in prison with what? Many hurtful lusts. Okay, so go back. Wisdom of Solomon uh, 6 and 9. Unto you, therefore, O kings, do I speak, that ye may learn wisdom and what? And not fall away. So, what is the Most High in Christ asking Israel to do? To learn. Learn that wisdom. Learn the essentials. Learn the basic necessities that it takes to be called a minister of the Most High, according to 6 4. Uh, let's get this. Let's get Hebrews. Hold this. Thank you. Hebrews 5 and 12. Hebrews 5, 12. For when for the time you ought to be teachers... You have need that one teach you again. See? So a lot of times because brothers are teachers. Israel that's learning up under these teachers. They accept a lot of false ways. They don't know. That these ways don't be ways of the Lord. Because these men. They speak with authority. They speak with power and speak like they was given the right to speak and deal and minister. But that spirit of charity and love and selfishness is void. And it's replaced with knowledge of the Bible. But not the wisdom of Christ. And that's why if you read the scriptures yourself, if you read the scriptures yourself, you're not off when you see that the scriptures teach the men and the teachers of Israel to be a certain way. But when you look into the face of the brothers that you fellowship with and it's not like that, you're not wrong. But what you are is scared to speak up and say something. So we have to do what? We have to submit ourselves one to another. So that we can help one another. So if, if anybody, if you ever saying that on a brother, you got to say something. Go ahead, bro. I, I was just mad, like you had said, uh, how it's replaced with knowledge and not Christ. Yeah. Because you know, it's like the Bible says, "Oh, uh, and not Christ." Because instead, like Christ, he dealt with compassion with the people, but a person with the knowledge of the scriptures, he just turn you, he just destroy a person because he know. <laughs> You know, the scriptures say he's supposed to do this, so they find all the different precepts to cut a person up. Instead, Christ, with compassion, you know, he rebuilt the people. He restored their spirit. You know, he was there to help them, encourage them versus just turn them down. Right. Christ looked at the people like, like, like he said, like he had, like he had compassion on them, as if that they had no shepherd. 
They looked like sheep having no shepherd. They can, he could tell that the people were not being taught. And they were in a city full of scribes and Pharisees, full of teachers and ministers and priests. So when we look upon the children of Israel, we should look through the same eyesight that Christ looked. If that spirit of Christ is inside of us, when, he, when we see the people, we should have that sorrow. That's why Christ was acquainted with grief, man, because he looked upon the people and the sorrow that he saw was because the people, man, they were consumed with foolishness. And they were as sheep having no shepherd. So he didn't go out and start, you know, shooting his mouth at them the wrong way. He taught. He taught. And he helped them. We, ain't can't, we can't help nobody in the condition that we're in if we don't deal with this, with this plague, with this problem of Satan inside of the congregations in Israel. For when, for the time you are to be teachers, you have one to teach you again, which be the first principles. Okay? Well, we went over that in 1 Peter 2. Of the oracles of God, and are become such as have need of milk and not strong meat. And that's what gets a lot of brothers. And we can't even be Men can't even be brothers throughout the world because they're so busy fighting each other over what strong meat. How much you know about this? How much you know about that? And the most I didn't send Christ to us to destroy us. Yeah, he did say that Christ said that he come not to what? Uh, bring peace but a sword. But brothers, don't un, don't sisters, don't get that mistaken. When we repent, we it ain't supposed to be a sword among us, a canker. It ain't supposed to be like that. But men will rise up. But no, ain't, Christ ain't saying that, man. He's saying when when our brothers, when we start repenting, and you see that in your house. You know, you got certain people, they ain't going to believe and, you know, they don't want to repent. They don't want to keep, they don't want to follow Christ. Then the sword is there. It's going to be a split. It's going to be a decision. You know what I'm saying? It's going to be a division there. But we can't feed our lust because we struggling and, and, and excuse me, we struggling over strong meat. So some of you might wonder where does that come from in the congregation. I'm telling you, amongst all the congregations in Israel, because I was asked by a child a little while ago, not today though, are we the only church that's teaching the truth? No, we're not. It's a lot of churches that's teaching the truth. But amongst a lot of the churches that is teaching the truth, there's a problem in Israel with this here will struggle over me when they should be taught to deal with what the principles and a lot of us were prophesying in part and don't even know it Paul said it and Paul was an elder he was man Paul had a lot of knowledge and understanding so when he said now we prophesy in part he didn't exclude himself and don't think he did like he patronizing the people by just including himself. He did that a lot of times, including himself. But that's the righteous thing to do, to include yourself amongst your people. Because you are one of the child, you are a child of Israel. You don't separate yourself from the people. Most I going he destroyed us as a nation, he going to build us as a nation. I'm sorry, I'm all over the place. <laughs> okay, but the first principles, the oracles of the Most High, and are become such as have need of milk and not strong meat. So, if we work out those things, which is going to take some work, 
you're going to hear you should, you should develop a change a born again spirit for everyone that uses milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness for he is a babe so if you have to go back and result to the milk the scriptures show you where you at and it's better to be that than to be nothing because the way that we stand now we are divided we are divided and you're unprofitable like that unto your people but strong meat belongs to them that are full age the scriptures say what well, perfect well a person is not perfect except they be thoroughly furnished and they not thoroughly furnished except how yeah they're reading the scriptures and they're going through the what procedure that it takes to grow, which is the milk. So if you threw away the laws, ain't no way you perfect. Ain't no way you a full age. Now, if you got the laws, then you still got to humble yourself. And if you're applying the laws, you still got to humble yourself to realize that prophecy came and it comes in part. And when that which is full is come, that which is part is done away with. So no matter how confident we might think we are, we still got to have that humble part to where we understand that if it's, if it's something that does what? Grieve a brother or bring forth strife or cause confusion? Well, we got to go to what Christ said. If thou were enter into life, keep the commandments. I'm going to write on the ground. Straight up. That's what's going to happen here. Because those things that are necessity, that are necessary for our brothers and sisters to enter into salvation is what? Applying the, the scriptures, applying the commandments, repentance through faith in Christ. And before you get to a piece of stake in this word, it's so much more that you have to worry about. So much more. Our faith, praying, fasting, uh, committing, making a complete sacrifice. Dealing with yourself as an individual, dealing with the worship of the Most High, faith in Christ, because Christ said, hey, you believe in the Father, believe in me, exalt in Christ, you, you, you still dealing with yourself. We ain't got to your, if you're a male, you got to the wife, you still on you, lust of the flesh, lust of the world, the pride of life, being rebuked. And what about your wife, your family, your children? We're going to talk about a piece of meat. You know, I, I, won't, I won't even discuss it. That's nothing to say. We discuss some of the things that you do need help with. That's how we the deal. For here's a bait, but strong meat belonging to them that are full age. Even those who by reason of use... Have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. You know what is good and evil? The people. The people. You can discern what's right and what's wrong amongst your people. You can discern. Didn't Christ, couldn't Christ discern the good and evil amongst people? He was a wise man. He foresaw evil. He knew where things were going. That's why when they came... Trying to do what? Use gal. Trying to trick him up with the woman that committed adultery. He ignored him. He didn't even feed into him. Trying to see if he going to twist the scriptures. Okay, so let's go back to Wisdom of Solomon. Wisdom of Solomon 6.10 and we're going to wrap it up. Or did we finish 9 unto you therefore O kings? So this is 9. Wisdom of Solomon 6 and 9. Unto you therefore O kings do I speak that you may learn wisdom and fall not away. So we don't want to fall away. Because the more and more we push away from those things that are right. You know what continues to creep in? More spirits. More spirits. And a lot of our people with those spirits of, uh, of vainglory, 
I also have the spirit of lust and temptation that comes with what the world. Okay. And they end up falling away. For they that keep holiness holy. See, see that complete package? You got to be a complete package. For they that keep holiness holy, meaning entirely, shall be judged what? Holy. And they that have learned such things shall find what to answer. You're going to find a defense for what? So it's the precept says the defense. I'm sorry, you, you would be apocryphal. You don't have that, that precept. But it says you shall find a defense. So just ponder it for a minute. What type of defense? For they that keep holiness holy shall be judged holy. It means you're going to be justified. And, and they that have learned such things shall find a defense. What are you finding a defense from? A liar. From sinning. Because if it's, if you need to defend yourself from a brother, that's what we're trying to get out of. Because that's who we think each other is in Israel. Oh, this camp is the enemy. Brother, that camp is not the enemy, man. That camp is not the enemy. They unlearned and they don't know. And they have to go back to what? The basics. So if they want to hear it, good. All praises. But stop thinking that camp from camp to camp is the enemy. They just don't know. Okay. We find in the defense from sin. Wherefore, set your affections upon my words, desire them, and ye shall be instructed. Okay, so with that, we're going to stop, and Lord's will, if the Most High willing, and nothing else come up, we'll pick it up. Our class on Tuesday, all praises to the Most High in Christ, and I hope that the word of the Most High continue to go out without hindrance, and it prosper, and it have free course. Shalom.